Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. We are the 28th of November. Today around the virtual table, we have Stephen Merle and Kevin Martins. Um, I hope Hervé and Mark will join us soon. Uh, let's get started with the weekly release 2.434. Um, as far as I can tell, packages are, are out. Uh, we have the Docker image to tag build GitHub release. Um, is there anything on the change log, Kevin? Uh, yeah, it's set to auto merge right now. Uh, Mark and I just finished up the changes that were needed. Deploy soon. I haven't seen uh, something else on the new weekly release. I haven't checked at the change log, so I propose we continue. Do you have other announcement? Because I don't either. <laughs> um, next week we will have week four or five as usual. I already forgot about the next LTS, but I believe I can copy past from last week. It will be middle of December, is that correct? Oh no, we don't know. Um, I always forget where to find this information. It's if it's okay for you. Let me let's... try. Let me try. It's um, it's the thirteenth of December, Damien. Thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Two point four two six point two. Okay. Uh, what is your source of truth? It is on a calendar? Me, yeah, the calendar. Jenkins event calendar. Okay, cool. Do we have security advisories? Nope. And, oh. Hey, um, as for the next major event, there will be a DevOps, Dev, DevOps World in London. I think it's the 5 or 6 December. And we have the FOSDEM, will be the 1 to uh, 3 or February 2024 in Brussels. Anything uh, maybe, else? On... Yep. Yes, maybe we, you should talk about the two evening for, for Jenkins, no? I'm not sure about the official plan yet, oh, okay. uh, but good point. Jean -Marc. Uh, stay tuned. We, you will have news about the first damn evening. Um, let's go on the walk we, we had to do. Um, okay, let's get started with uh, the work that was finished. Stefan, you can get started yes. on the RM64 migration. Yes, um, I did close the, the issue because we did the most of it. We finished with weekly, uh, weekly.ci.jenkins.io uh, that is now working on RM64. That was a bit of a challenge for this one because we had to migrate the volume. Uh, most of our uh, public K8S workload is now in uh, ARM64. We just kept two services on purpose because for now, we uh, either it's too early or we don't have the, the ARM64 building and we should have it directly from the providers like for mirror bits, for example. Um, and Matomo, we still have that uh, crazy problem of communication between the ARM64 uh, node pool and the MySQL instance. So we choose to, for now, to leave them on uh, Intel. Um, so everything else has been moved. Even Keycloak? I'm... Oh, I believe check. we might need a new issue 
Uh, that okay. will be part of the next milestone, if it's okay for you. Opening yes, yes, issue, but um... the remaining services that could have been forgotten. That's might only quick look, but is that okay for you to check? Yes. Binary. Uh, no RM. Because I believe we also have LDAP. Yeah, that's probably. Um, mirror, right. and you said Matomo stay on x86. Mm -hmm. My SQL issue with IOM64 not pool stay open a new issue next milestone. Exactly. They are not in the list, that's why. Services, tab, key cloak, services on Okay. Um, the main challenge in let's migrate them to ZRS while moving to yes. IM64. Over cost is close to nothing. The key clock is there, LDAP is there. Um, and decrease x86 node size. See, okay. and we have an issue for that that have created this. Um, during this milestone pool, where's the I think it's on the issues here. Okay, I've added the, the reference. See, okay, is there something else on the RM64? Um, we got two two issues for the next steps. Mm -hmm. True that. Infra.ci. On RM64. No, Damien. Sorry, I'm. I have too much in my brain. And the issue is the twenty-four. Okay. So four next issues. Um. We'll discuss. Uh, so we have to open a new issue for this one, and we will. Uh, decide if we need to work on it or not. Mm -hmm. And I believe, Stefan, um, the nodes pool size is a, a joint operation with you and Hi, and you wanted to start working on the infra CI steps. Is that okay for you? Yes, it's okay. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll double check later. Yeah. Okay, next issue finished. Uh, there were uh, Jira requests that has been done by uh, Team, I believe, or Alex. Same, um, we had issue um, uh, regarding permission, uh, but the, that has been uh, taken over. Usually, they end up on our milestones, but they are done by uh, Jenkins administrators or repository permission updater people. Um, oh. Uh, Stefan, I just realized uh, Hervé told us he had a medical appointment. I just realized that too. I'm sorry. I just forgot. Uh, let me send in a message. Okay. Okay. Um, so Hervé was able to find and fix the issue about plugin site build failing on InfraCI. So what happened is that 
uh, there were word builds and I believe he was able to fix it. I don't remember the exact fix. It was inside Gatsby and it was related to a specific environment variable that led Gatsby and its plugin to have a word behavior. So it is fixed. So the work on plugin site was able to continue. And as Hervé mentioned, we should be able to merge the Jenkins files uh, to avoid having different behaviors on CI Jenkins IO and infra CI in the future. Oh, thanks, Hervé, for that work. Now, work in progress. Um, first of all, we had an issue from a user. Uh, same issue, they, they told us they were blocked by uh, belnet.b. But in that case, they weren't. At least on the Belnet Mirror Administrator uh, confirmed that they didn't add any deny list with the IPs we mentioned on their system. So I've requested the user to send us a trace route to see where are their requests blocked. I haven't had an answer yet. So for the next milestone, I propose that we ping them. And if we don't have any answer, we enable the mirror again. And if it failed for them, they have to answer. Is there any objection on this? OK. Um, without a response from requester, we'll enable the mirror again. Um, we had a request from Oleg, same, he didn't confirm, he, wa he wanted to be removed from Jenkins Infra to have less notifications and to be moved to the alumni uh, uh, group. So I kicked him out and re-invited him. I haven't seen any result from him, so I will try to bring him personally. Um, done, waiting from confirmation for confirmation from Oleg. So one last milestone and then we close without without further information. Any question on this? Uh, get Jenkins IO migrate from mirror bits to mirror bits parent. No work done. So no time to lose on this one. I plan to start working on this next week. So eventually for the upcoming milestone, worst case in two milestones. Uh, there is also issue to open with cost related to this service because that service is using Azure bucket storage with costs between 1.5 to 2K per month. And that will be easier at first sight that need to be discussed to instead having a centralized persistent volume shared by multiple highly available instances to have one local storage for each and we update it par in parallel. That might need a bit of rework on some scripts on the PKG virtual machine during the core releases that would add one or two minute penalty when trying to synchronize the releases, but that will have at least the benefits of uh, not paying that much. Yeah, that uh, will match with uh, what we did for the, the new uh, update center. Yes, absolutely. The code is in place for doing that, so that should be OK. And we should be able to parallelize to multiple, uh, to multiple locations. Storage is too much due to Azure file storage request. Um, yes, outside outside from this, that work still need to be done. So we will be able to use the same chart for a, the new update center and that service. You think that we can we can uh, work with Mirrorbit to have the ARM uh, version directly? That's unrelated to the point here. Agree. There is no ARM64, but yes, the answer is yes, you can. Uh, I thought Hervé already contacted yeah, them, but I'm not sure. Then. Yep. Uh, you, we can send pull requests to propose no binaries. Um, yeah. If you're interested, you can go and just think with Hervé to be sure uh, you don't repeat the same work as his, what he used to do. Yes. Uh, next issue. Uh, Pool size. So 
since we moved a lot of services to RM64, now uh, we checked a few elements about the size of the node pool, this collection of machines running on our Kubernetes cluster. We already started the cleanup, and as Stefan and I checked, uh, it might be interesting for us to keep the small instances, because right now we have on the normal uh, walk around free instances to pack the services, which is a bit less budget than having two medium, because medium are twice the size and twice the price. So better to have three than the equivalent of four, because two medium is four small. So we should just add a message confirming and explaining in a written manner what I said. But we should be able to decrease the size of the Intel machines. I was waiting for Stefan to close the first batch of IRM64 issue. So now, Stefan, that we have migrated weekly CI, we should be able to check the usage on uh, in terms of CPU and memory usage on these nodes and see what we can do if we can uh, decrease to small. I believe we should because same as the RM64 sizing. So we should be able to start working on this one. Finally, I've added, I saw a message in Azure recommendation about the fact that the system pool hosting the, the DNS server for the cluster and those elements is only having one node pool. We should have at least two nodes, so we ensure high, high availability for storage service, load balancer service, DNS service, virtual network services. So we have to work on this for the upcoming milestone, of course. That should be quite easy. Is there any question? Um, Four tasks, one done, one to be reported, and two to do for the next milestone. Uh, Stefan, we had the Infra CI Jenkins IORM64 node pool. Uh, I think the name slightly changed since. Let me update it. Oh, no. Is that only about the node pool, or is that uh, is the scope larger than that? I think it's 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 larger than that. I understand now that okay. uh, that was not clear enough. No problem. Is that okay for you? Uh, we had a command uh, to update yes. and extend the scope. Yes. Um, I propose we right now we change the title. What will be the scope for you? Infra CI on IRM. 64. Yeah, it's it's uh, migrating so, uh, infra to uh, to IM uh, 64. And, and okay, is that agents? That's both. In fact, we need to Everything? we need to create okay. a node pool on IM 64 for the agents, and we need to move infra to uh, to IM 64. Don't either we do uh, uh, both in the same uh, issue, or we do two separate issue. I don't know. Okay, um, for me, sticking to one issue is okay, but that means you will have to update the summary. Is yeah. that okay for you? In my brain, that was that. Okay, no problem. Then we agree on the goal, uh, but you, I'm tasking you to update the issue content. Yes. Is that okay for you? Yes. Um, issue body to update with a full play with a full plan. And let's start. Okay, Mark, welcome. Just in time for VPN infrastructure. Uh, were you able to retry, or is it still stale? It, it's still stale. I've okay. I'll need some help, and getting that help is going to require that I schedule a meeting. <laughs> and and complications because of where the computer sits, etc. Sorry. No problem. Just. Wanted to have a check. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me mark here. Perfect. Um, sponsorship as a subscription. Hey, that's my turn. Uh, with the help of Stefan, uh, because we are trying to pair as much as possible, we were able to successfully start CI Jenkins IO virtual machine agents, ephemeral ones, inside a new subscription. 
Um, right now, I'm not able to find a way to pay or to know if the credits are automatically filling. So it's my credit card, so that will be the surprise. But the reason is because the report say, hey, you have consumed exactly zero dollar. But the area, the section where I have the credits mentioned the usage of net virtual networks and resources we created. And I dig the bits. And in fact, it's because virtual machines started for less than two minutes are not built. And since the only test we ran was spin up a machine successfully, then run an MVN version command and then stop it, I believe we are not charged for that, which is good and bad news at the same time. So that means we will have to need to schedule a bit more workload. Um, if it's okay for everyone, I will prefer waiting for the 1st of December for adding more workload, unless CI Jenkins, you already start picking that uh, that new agent. I haven't checked. Uh, it's just because it's my credit card, so just in case, I will rather wait for Christmas for paying Azure. <laughs> that will let me fool my book. Anyway. Merry Christmas. Um, <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas, Microsoft. Uh, we are really grateful from them for giving us these credits. And that also validates the work we did by creating a um, symmetric virtual network. And we peer them with the existing network that allow controller in the current subscription to spin up agent on the new virtual network. And they can contact without requiring a public IP and routing through the internet. Which means now the next steps. I need to add a comment here explaining I will do the same for Infra CI, Trusted CI, Search CI for all of our controllers. So they should be able to run virtual machine or ACI container for CI Jenkins. Next step is ACI because that's that cost for us way more than the usual Azure virtual machine for CI Jenkins. Uh, Stefan. Can you explain to everyone the only limitation we saw based on Microsoft answer when we try to spin up machines? Spot. Um, oh yes, because that that new uh, subscription cannot have spot instances uh, for now. It's not uh, allowed by Microsoft. That's just uh, uh, that's not technical. That's more of an administrative uh, allowance. We you say that. Oh. Yep. So we, we, we need to wait for them to allow us to have spot intents in that uh, um, subscription. So for now, um, Damien had to to uh, prepare and change the code in, in Puppet to be able to disable spot instance only on that uh, subscription, but allow them on the other subscriptions. And Damien, do you think that that limitation is an intentional limitation from Microsoft that because we're using donated credits or is no. it? No, no, it is not. Okay. No, I think it's just because it's it's uh, Black Friday and soon it will be Christmas. So they don't give them away so easily. They need them. Yep. Exactly. I see. Okay. I need to I answer think. them. I'm late on my emails, but that's the exact, uh, I, th I think the same as Stefan. So we will retry later. My proposal is that we still start to move to migrate our workloads and we see the cost of only disable workloads. And then we will decide along with Microsoft in the upcoming weeks. Is that okay for everyone? Or we limit to two minutes because like that it's free. <laughs> Good point. I hope you have optimized your builds. <laughs> Let's talk <laughs> about the bomb now. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops, oh, ours, oh, <laughs> no. Um, next steps, ACI for CI Jenkins IO, trusted cert and infra.ci, VM agent. Uh, that's all for that topic. Is there any question? I mean, is that um, sponsorship something that we should write like a blog post for announcing, or is this something that already exists that we don't need to uh, announce like that? Good question. We, we, I, th I think we certainly should announce it, but I'm not sure on the timing, et cetera. So, so yes, uh, yeah, no, at least in my mind, we should. Damien, I, sorry mm -hmm. for my answering on, in, even though the question was asked to you. 
No, I, th I think we should uh, know that we are sure. Um, I We can start preparing something, but I will give you a go no go once I will start the credits flowing in the billing for that new subscription. Right. Is that okay for everyone because to wait for not, that? Because if not, you have to write a post but on, on Damien Duportal because it will be his credit card. So we, yeah, we exactly. Have to <laughs> right. And well, um, and it might also be a good thing for us if we get about the same time confirmation that DigitalOcean will renew the sponsorship. We then have two blog posts announcing Microsoft, thank you, DigitalOcean, thank you. And that gives us ammunition, that gives us arguments that we can use to try to persuade AWS. AWS, you should also get involved. And, and it's about this time that CDF will submit their big proposal to AWS for all the donations that AWS should do. For the first credits to be used for Right. Billing, yeah, good point. Does it answer your question, uh, Kevin? Yeah, no, it's perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mark. I don't have anything else to add on the subscription. Do you have other questions? No, okay. Uh, Digital Ocean, no work done. Uh, I'm a bit late on the email. Uh, I found the previous email, I just have to write it. So expect something before end of week. That's my top priority right now. Except the boxing, uh, putting stuff inside boxes. To do it before end of week. Um, so Hervé is on the medical appointment. He won't be able to report, but uh, uh, summary contributors.jenkins.io website is up. Uh, I'm not sure if it has content, uh, but everything is in place for that. I think it's contributors. Yes, we have a website with fastly in front, so like the the other, it's hosted. The backend is hosted inside our cluster. Uh, so now it's a matter of deploying the content of the source code generated by InfraCI inside the production website. Yeah, and it did, so, it did change the Jenkins file this morning to build it from Infra. So I believe, uh, yeah, tomorrow we will have a first version if we have one on the source code. So great work on that. Great work, Kevin, as well, because I believe you worked with survey uh, side by side on Pre on preparing the topic, uh, designing everything. So, yeah. Well, uh, I, I re Chris Dern especially has a ton of work that he's put in that they've put into this. That uh, they've been working with Hervé on a lot of the infrastructure backend stuff. So, uh, just huge, huge, huge thanks to Chris for all their help, um, as well as Hervé and everyone else, of course, Christina Pizzagalli, other people. So, yeah. yeah. I reviewed the concept behind the contributor spotlight and the retain Jenkins, retain top Jenkins contributors with the Jenkins board on Monday and all the board members that were present agreed wholeheartedly. Yes, this is the right thing to do. Thanks very much. So they were very grateful, Kevin, for your work and for the infra team's work for Christina Pizzagalli and her design of the site and for Chris Stern's implementation of the site. Excellent. Really a, a great, great effort all around. And on the infra side, that has been um, an opportunity for us to discover that uh, most of our buckets or other buckets don't have network security rule, sometimes for good reasons, because uh, we had to, uh, to, to use Blob Xfer or AZ copy tools to copy data on it. But now that we have uh, automated a lot of things, it's time for us to add uh, rules on this one. Um, that's a topic uh, I mentioned earlier, Mark, just before you joined about get Jenkins IO, which use mirror bits in production since one to eventually three years. And uh, we realized uh, with both Serve and Stefan by checking the Azure cost that uh, the storage behind get Jenkins IO, the storage system costs, costs us almost 2K per month on the Azure bill. I said one for, for Mark, so now you say two. One to two. Yeah, we are almost at two. It depends on the month. And mm -hmm. not because of the storage itself, 
the storage, uh, the storing data uh, cost 30 bucks per month. But it cost us before of mainly write operations and uncached operations on the, the object storage system. So we are built because of a really, really large amount. We think without being able to confirm that the cost come from the three minutes update of the update center script, which copy from PKG to that bucket every three minutes, a set of plugin when it's updated. And the second thing we discover, it's not costing us a lot in, it's less than 10 bucks per month, but that's half of the requests on that system are an authenticated request or authentication error request, which means we need to put some network security rule to remove half of the request on the storage system here, in any case. Um, Mark, if you are okay, I think I will take a session with you to guide you on the cost exploration. Same exercise as I did with Stefan and Hervé, if you're okay. Yes, Stephen, that would be great. Do you think that should be a good thing? Uh, I believe it should be a good thing for Mark to have the same le uh, oh, knowledge, yes. level of knowledge for us. Yes, hoping that this time it will not uh, go to a 503 error, but yes, it's very um, interesting to uh, pinpoint the to the writing operations. Mm -hmm. So, and, and a, is it possible that AZ copy or AZ copy or whatever it is we're using to do the synchronization is doing unnecessary writes that it's got, I mean, that, that could be, but that's more than 65% uh, of the cost, just the operations. Oh. Okay. Um, so for the websites such as Jenkins IO, we haven't checked in details. Uh, we are sure that the cost I mentioned earlier is only in the case of mirror bits. We have a first set of short term uh, steps to put everything on read only to be sure that we still see this cost and they come from the source and the network adding network rules as well to be sure we don't have someone trying to write content from another uh, machine mm. that we forget. Um, but also the cost of using a normal uh, block device, uh, a premium standard SSD. And see, the reason initially why, uh, why we have that centralized persistent is because each mirror bits instance on Apache server need to read this data and it's highly available. Mm -hmm. So we were in need of a system that in which we could read on many different machines. However, uh, with the recent update center work using mirror orbits, we discovered that it's not the problem to copy in parallel to a short amount of locations. So that means we could use mirror orbits with local storage, with a local persistent volume on the data. We will pay, instead of 30 bucks per month, we should pay 200 bucks for the storage. That's more or less the storage for normal SSD of that size. Uh, mm -hmm. That's something we check quickly with Stefan. But 200 bucks is 10 times less than 2K per month. Mm -hmm. And there is no additional or hidden cost. So then the additional cost will be us changing the script on PKG that runs every five minutes on every uh, plugin updates to copy in parallel with AirSync or whatever system on both volumes. Uh, I need to open an issue. But here, the, I mentioned the network rules because the network rules and the read-only volume would help a lot to decrease the amount of requests here. Is there any question? None from me, thanks. That's a great discoverer. Absolutely. Stefan. Yes. Your turn. Uh, the sanity check system on the Packer image to, to have a written and automated contract with the developers of CI Jenkins IO about what tools and behavior can they expect from the agents. Oh, can you give us a report? Um, I did uh, the, the Linux Ubuntu part, and now I'm working on the, on the Windows part without any success for now. It's taking forever each time. And, um, but I, I managed to have one uh, Windows machine waiting for me right now to play with it and, and understand why it's not working. The next step will be to uh, uh, factorize the common test 
between the Ubuntu and Windows. And like that, we will be able to have uh, three set of check, one for Linux, one for Windows, and one common. And of course, we need to update all the update key manifests to match those files and update those files with the new tools versions. Perfect. Is there any question to Stefan? Great work. So let's continue. That's the kind of background task. You run a build, you wait one hour doing something else, and you iterate. <laughs> yeah, and you cry because it's not working. Yes, that's that's my everyday life. Next subject, redirect chain is pages to English pages. Um, what's the status on that, uh, Kevin and Mark? Kevin's made progress, Mark hasn't. <laughs> Okay. And we That's still a, need help from Damien uh, at the end of the day. Right. So okay. so first step, though, is let's get Mark to make progress so that Kevin and Mark are synchronized. Then then we will come to you, Damien, for a separate discussion. We, we had I had to do this embarrassing discussion in the governance meeting where I noted that Kevin's made progress and I haven't. So so the the shame factor is kicking in there. I'll I'll see what I can do to make some progress. Kevin, if I understand correctly, you've already got a Kubernetes cluster configured and you were able to do some initial steps and I haven't done that yet. So Yep. I uh I got Kube CTL, Minikube, a couple other things set up and and uh going on my machine. It's more just uh the configuration and interaction between like the home charts and uh cn.jenkins.io part was the the myster mystery for me okay oh uh, yeah okay uh, i think i have an idea um alas i won't have that much time until next week uh well, and, okay and i don't think you. that i don't think that i will have time until next week so so certainly us scheduling time this week would would only be an exercise in trying to make me squeeze more time into my day than exists. And and keep keep some hours for night too. Huh? Yes. <laughs> so that means if it's okay for you, Kevin, I propose that we delay, we don't add to this milestone, but on the next one. So that means uh, next Tuesday, we start to bring back the subjects and that will let you time to either experiment on your own or spend your time on other tasks. Is that okay? Yeah, no, that sounds perfect. Great. Thank you very much, Damon. So availability for next milestone. Let's delay of one week. I am sorry, it's just I have day of Friday and I'm moving stuff. So yeah. I will prefer having time next week. That will be perfect for me. Yeah, no worries, Damon. You take care of yourself. We can come back to this when you have time and you're ready. No worries at all. Thanks. Um, okay, we'll invert back subjects just to be sure. Uh, update Jenkins IO to another cloud. Uh, so the pull request on update center two is open. Uh, so now it's a matter of time for someone from the GenSec team to have the time to spend on reviewing our pull request. Uh, we are for that part, we are blocked now because uh, we don't want to merge that. Even if we have the power to do so, even if we have multiple review from each other, eventually from Maroc team or someone will with also merge power on that repository, we want Daniel or Vadek to have their own eyes since they build the system and they have all the knowledge required because we don't want to risk breaking the update center updates. Yes. Um, so I've contacted the GenSec team. They have a lot, a, a lot of things and Christmas is approaching. So right now we consider eventually they will have time to do this before end of year, but most probably January. Uh, so that mean, yeah, uh, that one, uh, we can take the time needed in that case. And that's what they started to work since yesterday. We have a GEP to work on this. Now that we have validated, uh, functionally speaking, the new system, now we have two main um, systems. So Hervé uh, will start a new GEP pro, uh, that shows the prototype 
the pull request and explain the why do we do that. Um, the idea is that to have the whole team to contribute, but Hervé proposed to at least now start leading. Then we might end over or not, depend on the availability and motivation of uh, everyone. And for I propose, Stefan, as we discussed with Hervé, uh, for that milestone, you don't have to put your hands dirty on that topic. You keep working on RM64. And the next milestone we delay, you should start working on the performance testing. Is that okay uh, for you, Stefan? Yes. I'm sorry, but it, I never say performance testing. It's for me, it's it's a stress test. Yep. I'm that's... old. Sorry. Um, I heard that naming with person working with Tandem and VAC 80. So you're not that old. <laughs> Trust <laughs> me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The milestone after. Um, that's all for the update center. Is there any question on the topic here? Nope. Okay. Um, oh, network security rules. Uh, just one thing to check, Stefan. Can I let you help me? We will check if we have network security rules on the Azure buckets on this one. And we have to check that we had them and we don't break yeah. the service. Yeah, and we can we can play around before because it's not in production yet. Exactly. Yeah. And then apply. this is why I would like to have the ARM64 for for mirror bit too. Uh yes, but I know. <laughs> we we clearly don't have the availability now for this year, at least uh, on forking it and building it ourselves. We can discuss that next year, but I believe the maintainer have taken, uh, yeah. we have new maintainer on mirror bits and they plan a maintenance release be, uh, in December. So that means RM64 should come soon in January, I expect. Uh, Stefan, last topic, yeah. uh, scale waste sponsorship. Can you report? The, the link we have in the issue to apply to uh, an open source project is dead. There is no more open source project in, in Scaleway. Uh, so I was not able to apply. And I have uh, no news from my, uh, my friends inside to know where to send email and where to get uh, contact in Scaleway for an official uh, apply application, you know, appliance. No, uh, mm -hmm. apply. I'm sorry, apply. So oh, nothing that's... new in there. That's new, but that's not good news. But yeah, nothing yeah. you can do about it. Uh, yeah, if we can't, we won't spend that much time. In that case, I propose that we um, we keep that topic for the milestone. So we just wait for news. I might know people inside Skillway and other departments, so let's try different areas. And I propose we, know we let our... You. Yes, I now. think so. And if we don't see, we don't spend that much time and find others. Yes. Any questions so far on Skillway? Okay. Uh, so next milestone, I will create it after our meeting. I'm late of two and soon free meetings to upload recording. I plan to do it uh, once I will have a decent internet connection and a bit of time. Maybe we, uh, maybe I can help? No. There, um, I'm not sure because there is a part that require YouTube administrator, um, administration access on the Jenkins. So eventually Mark, but no worry, it's not time consuming. It's just, I forgot. Okay. It's just, well, uh, but so there are, there are at least I can do that. And I think Kevin might have permissions to do that. So we could deflect it off of you and have that kind of bookkeeping. I just barely did it. So if you don't mind, Damien, I'm happy to take the action to, to do the upload. That way we keep you focused on infra tasks and this annoying task of up, updating oh. the meeting notes is, is somewhere else. No, no worries. If it's okay for you, we'll keep the task because, okay. um, uh, we have a procedure written, but uh, we realize soon that we need a special set of permissions. 
Mm -hmm. No worries. That one is not time consuming. It's just I forgot. Uh, okay. So thanks not for the problem, proposal. Yeah. Um, the thing is, next time I know I will have uh, some overload, most probably around FOSDEM. I might need uh, help. But the thing is that you also will have some overload around FOSDEM. So, yeah. Um, that's all for me on the current topics. If it's okay, let's look at the new topics that could have come recently. I've opened an issue from an end user. Let me add it here. New topic, 3H. Um, so a user was asking us on the mailing list about, hey, um, they need the public IPs of all the mirrors. Uh, in a textual form, so they could automate or at least have a, a source of truth about the public IP that their network infrastructure could reach to download plugin for Jenkins. That's an excellent idea, and thanks, Mark, for answering and giving the the nice idea of parsing the results of mirror stats. So, I've written a proposal. Uh, we should be able to write a job on Infra CI that will run a shell script, which at this will parse the result of that page and extract the list of mirror from here and write them on a TXT file and a JSON file that could be machine parsable. Because we only have a few, uh, a tiny list of domain names, which are configured directly in mirror bits. It's not automation as code. So that's why we need a way to parse that page and extract it. But then that will be really nice because we could also in the future update that script to add other public IPs such as updates.jenkins.io for instance, or all of our public IP. A bit like the uh, there is an API on GitHub that I think it's meta or something that provide all their public IP for the GitHub action outbound IP, et cetera. So the first step will be mirror bits. The user was interested in helping so that could be interesting to, to guide them on, hey, if you are able to write a shell script, we can, we can create the empty shell of the repository, and then their shell script could be tested on Infra CI. What do you think, folks? Don't you think that something exists already in Mirrorbits to, to provide those, those IPs? It doesn't. Already checked numerous times. OK. That's a good feature request. Yeah. I, I, I feel like you are ready to open feature <laughs> request on your orbit repository, I, Stefan. Actually, I think this is one of those same things. People should not use proxies on their corporate networks, and people should not rely on IP addresses of, of things outside their corporate networks. So I'm not sure that the Mirabits people should actually publish this list, but we have people who need it. So I, I will rephrase it differently. There is still area for improvement on mirror bits with the ability to configure it. Yes. Given a given text file, it's uh, ingested inside the system and it's auto configured because right now we have to do it manually. And that li that um, input that input could be already available publicly because it's just a set of domain names. But yeah, I, I uh, don't get I don't get exactly what you said because uh, Mark. It, they, they really need to open the firewall to allow connection to those IP outside of their network. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah mm. actually, I, I disagree. I think they don't. I think they should stop doing that and allow their people to access the network. Yes. <laughs> oh, to, uh, to allow people to access anywhere. Right. Yes. Allow if, them to, if, it, it's, if, it, if it's people, yes. But it, yeah. it, it's, I think blocking blocking your employees from access to the internet if you're going to do that you should probably just mm -hmm. cut the wire completely and admit you're I agree. That, that, that's just right. an idea if, if it's that serious air gap them but then you accept the business impact of air gap exactly i understand what you mean then okay um so is there anyone okay to help the user uh is there anyone motivated with the time to guide our user to set up that system So, so are you, you're asking that, so my assumption is they could, they could parse that file as easily as we can. Am I mis misunderstanding something? Oh, um, my proposal was that if they want to help us, once they have done the script, 
we can run the script ah, in a repository of Jenkins Infra and deploy these or these files inside report Jenkins IO, which is public. Got it. I see what you're saying. So it is that if they choose to automate, if they automate the, the parsing of the HTML page, we would be willing to, and it would have to be us who update a, a publication location and a systematic refresh of that data. Got it. Exactly. Thank you. And okay. the idea, the work for us to do um, right now will be to create, to, to specify and plan right what I'm saying on a written manner uh, with something like create a new repository with a Jenkins file that we add on infra CI and uh, an empty, uh, I don't know, run.sh script run by infra. And that script is responsible to generate a JSON and a TXT file. We start with this and then they can open a pull request to run the shell script with the shell script that work for them. We control the output and the content of the script and we start merging. We ensure we have CI and then we move on. Okay, now it's done. We spend time on deploying to reports Jenkins IO and boom, benefits. Nice. Are you interested, Stefan? <laughs> I, I was waiting for you to push me on the, on the, the, the bus, but yes, yes, of course. The, the idea is to have contributor, even if it's a one-time contributor, the idea is to people can take the, let's say the ownership on a request they made and they help us improve at the same time. So it's a win-win for everyone. That will be my first uh, repository that I, I create in, in InfraCI, okay. but it's fine. I don't mind helping you. As we said, uh, we try to pair as much as possible nowadays. So no worries on, you won't be alone on this one. I'm not. I'm not worried. Don't worry. Uh, no do problem. we have other new issues? Belnet, uh, get Jenkins. I know. I don't see new issues here. Uh, Mark, Stefan, Kevin. Do you have other topics you want to to add or to 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 discuss? I need to look at the governance meeting notes because I think there was something, but now I don't remember what it was. So just a minute while I look. What, uh, there what, was... Wasn't it related to the BOM uh, agent issue I had to create? Uh, oh, good question. Let me look. I, I should be able to see it. So there was... Oh, no. Well, so yes, there was a switch, uh, create an issue to switch the agent implementation that was an action item that you had that I didn't find the answer to, but that wasn't my question. It was more, okay. what was it? No, I, I don't, oh, Azure Credits Donation, and you've already reported on that. That was the topic. Okay. And and by the way, the, the okay, I need to write a separated issue that is some more related to the sponsorship, but if it's okay for everyone, I will create a new issue mm -hmm. about the, the goal, Stefan and Kevin, is to try temporarily to use the new subscription for spinning up virtual machines instead of container for running the BOM. The goal is to be sure that do we have the same slow behavior when we have a big high number of jobs running SH step in parallel on CI Jenkins IO? Do we have the same contention behavior when we use Azure Virtual Machine plugin with Virtual Machine instead of the Kubernetes plugin with Kubernetes on yeah. Amazon. A way of pinpointing that bug, in fact, to understand exactly. where it's coming from. Good. Exactly. That's the idea. Uh, then the next step is that if we see a difference, we have to rule out the AWS slash Azure. And since CI Jenkins are already run inside Azure, the next step will be, oh, let's spin up a, a Nikes cluster and try to use Kubernetes plugin like today for the bomb with container, but running inside Azure. And we see if the behavior is the same and if mm. we can rule out the From network From inside. Connection. Exactly. So these are the next steps. Uh, I don't have anything else. That's smart. Do you folks? Nope, okay. Nothing else for me. Cool. So then I believe we can Stop sharing, stop recording, and see each other next week.